Hello and welcome to this build guide video for Kerbal Space Program 2 for science. Um, so in this video we're going to be building this rocket which I have specifically designed for the Duna Monument mission. Um, it does look like a relatively complicated rocket this one but it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. Um, but as usual with any of my rockets what I've done is I have designed it so that each stage gets gradually smaller as you go up and that just means that as you are um, losing the weight from the previous stages each subsequent engine is a little bit more efficient so the way I've designed this rocket is as you can see we have the biggest stage which is designed to get us up off of the surface of Kerbin and then the next stage is designed to get us into orbit around Kerbin and also get us to Duna and into orbit around Duna as well and I've added a docking port and a few other bits to this so that we can actually rendezvous and dock with that in orbit around Duna because it's always good to have a backup and I find there is usually a bit more, a bit of fuel left over in this stage uh, once we've done all of our landing and so on. Now that is the um, launch vehicle and this is the actual payload, it's the actual lander in, it, in this case it's a three part lander. Um, because what we've got is this stage is actually our deorbit stage which will get us going down towards the surface of Duna and then we're also going to use that stage to essentially try and hover across to the monument because it's quite a difficult one to get to um, and it's uh, there's only a very small area in which we can actually land to do the mission. And then of course we have the main lander itself and the idea with this is that we're actually going to use this stage to do the majority of the landing burn and then this stage will only do the final burn to actually get us down to the surface and then we're also going to use this stage to get up above Duna and then that stage should actually get us uh, back to um, Kerbin and uh, also in orbit around Duna as well. And as you can see, I've also added the launch escape system. Uh, but yeah, that's the rocket which we're going to be building. Uh, like I say, it looks fairly complicated, but it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. So to build this rocket, the first thing we need to do is we need to actually unlock a bit of science. So we will go to the research and development building. And now we're here, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by um, unlocking medium launchers because we want to get the X264 Metalox tank. We're also going to use the main sails as well in this, so we'll research that. Then we also want to get to durable power systems, so we'll buy enhanced electronics and durable power systems. Uh, we're getting that one because we want the retractable solar panels so we can actually retract them before going into Juno's atmosphere. And because we're going into Juno's atmosphere, we're also going to grab the atmospheric science so we can use the little sniffer as well. Now, the only other thing we need to get to is heavy landing, really. So we will start off by uh, doing expanded construction, precision machining, landing utilities, and of course, heavy landing. And that is pretty much all you need for this build. So yeah, let's get straight into the build, shall we? Right, so we'll start off by going to command and grabbing the gumball command pod. And then of course we are going to grab a medium heat shield and pop that on the bottom and then on the top we're going to grab the small monopropellant tank and we'll also put a uh, docking port on there and we're also going to add parachutes as usual so as i always do we will grab the mark 12 radial drogue parachutes and pop three of these on the top there and then we're also going to pop three of the mark 16s on as well and for the science, we want to add the little sniffer, and we're going to pop this underneath the uh, back main parachute. I'm also going to flip it just so that it looks a little bit better. And we could use the science junior, but we're just going to use the science junior junior on this one. And we're going to clip this into the monopropellant tank, and it doesn't actually affect the uh, balance of this, so we can just basically throw it inboard. But I'll try and get it relatively central, so I'll pop it there, and that should be uh, uh, pretty decent when it comes to the science. So obviously we are also going to need the launch escape system. So for that we'll start off by going to coupling, and grabbing the small TD-12 stack decoupler, and we're actually going to flip this upside down, because when we decouple we don't want it blocking the docking port, so we want it to be decoupling down, well that way instead of, you know, getting rid of the bottle rocket and then leaving the uh, decoupler on the... Um, docking port so as I say for the engines we will use the bottle rocket or the uh, launch escape system even 
And then the only other thing I guess we need to do with this is we want to right click on the command pod, go to advanced controls and we're going to turn off pitch and yaw so it won't affect our uh, adjustments when we are pointing towards the manoeuvre. So for the final stage or the next stage, um, what we'll do is we'll grab the medium stack decoupler, then we will go to utilities and we're going to grab the medium reaction wheel and pop that there and for the tanks we want to use the x216 methylox tank and we're also going to use a poodle engine for this so instead of just using these rcs thrusters we're also going to add some to this as well so we'll go to utility and we'll grab the rv105s and we're going to pop four of these on here and we're popping them on at an angle because um, we are going to need to put a ladder coming down here and they can block the ladder. So we'll pop them on there and we'll also need some uh, solar panels as well. So for that we'll go to electrical and we're going to use the SP4L retractable solar panels. And for this what I'm actually going to do is instead of putting them on at 4 symmetry, uh, I'm actually going to go to radial symmetry and move them in by one notch and then we'll do the same on this side and I just think that looks a little bit better than having them at four symmetry which gives a nice effect I guess so we'll try and get these relatively level it doesn't matter that much how level they are but it's just it looks better if they are pretty much on the same level um, so yeah and with the RCS thrusters we're also going to turn the uh, yaw and pitch off on these as well so that they don't affect our adjustments so I believe that is pretty much everything for this stage except we do need some more parachutes now we could just use these parachutes to get down onto Juna's surface but what I'm actually going to do is add four parachutes onto the side here so we'll go back to utility and we'll grab the mark 16 radial again and we're going to add four of these onto the side here And then what we're also going to do is we're going to right click on them, we're going to hit deploy settings and we're going to max the deploy altitude out as well because we want to get the most out of these uh, parachutes and deploying them at a thousand meters, um, it, because the atmosphere is quite a bit thinner than Kerbin's, it, they won't slow us down necessarily quick enough especially since this is going to be quite a hefty piece of kit that we're trying to get down. Uh, so we'll make sure that's maxed out so we can get the most out of those parachutes. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything for the main um, top half of the lander. Uh, for the next bit, we'll go back to coupling and grab another medium decoupler. And it's going to be pretty much the same tank and engine configuration here. So we'll use the X216. And then the engine, we will use another poodle. And of course, we are going to need some landing legs as well. So for that, we'll go to ground and grab the Wombat landing legs. And we're going to pop four of these on the bottom here. And once again, we're popping them on at an angle because we're going to need to add some ladders, which we can do now. So with the ladders, what I like to do is I like to make sure, if we go to utility and grab the medium ladder, I like to try and make sure that the bottom of the ladder is lined up roughly with the bottom of the tank, of the, the engines. So we'll extend that part. You can see it probably could do with going down a little bit further. And that will probably be pretty much where we want it and then we're going to add two more ladders just to make sure we can actually get all the way back up to the command pod so we'll pop one on the bottom of the top stage we'll then pop another one on the very top of that stage and ideally now these ladders should be overlapping which means that we'll have a good coverage to be able to get back up when we want to um, now the only other thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to right click on the landing legs, hit auto suspension and max these springs out and the uh, damp strength as well because then we're less likely to, uh, you know, if we hit the ground a little hard we're less likely to hit the engine and break that. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into action groups and I'm going to set up a couple of action groups. So the first thing we'll do is we want to um, have the ladders extend at the same time as the landing legs. So if we go into gear and then go to utility, we can find the uh, keyless long um, telescopic mobility enhancers. And we're just gonna set them to toggle deployment when we hit the gear action group. And we're also gonna set up a couple of action groups for the parachutes as well. So ordinarily I would have the top parachutes on the uh, command module set so that they will, you know, the drogues will cut and the mains will um, deploy at the same time. But I'll do that in the tweaking time lapse. 
But what we're going to do with the parachutes for actually landing on Duna is we're going to create three different um, action groups. So we'll go to custom one or two even. Then the first thing we'll do is we will find the parachutes that we want, which are not the RV 105s. So there's the Mark 16s and it's these two as well. And what we're going to do is in, in action group two, we're going to set that to, to deploy. Then in action group three, we will set them to cut. And in action group four, we're going to set them to repack. And the reason I'm doing that is because we are going to want to essentially stop a few hundred meters above the surface and hover over to the um, landing site. Uh, now, when we do that, we really do need to be able to cut the parachutes because they can actually make a bit of a mess of everything when we're trying to do our, you know, pitching maneuvers and so on. So the reason I've set this up is we can then press 2 to deploy as we're descending. Then once we get low enough, we'll press three to cut and then we'll press four immediately afterwards to uh, repack them just in case something goes wrong and we need to redeploy them and it's just easier than having to right click on them individually and uh, try and do it while we are you know panicking during a uh, bad landing anyway i'll retract the ladders and now we can get onto the uh, actual launch vehicle because well actually we need to do our deorbit stage first don't we so firstly we'll go back to coupling grab the uh, medium decoupler and then for the tank on this one we're going to use the x232 tank and the engine will be the skipper engine and as i say the idea with this uh, stage is that it's going to get us out of orbit it's going to get us going um, down towards the target then we're actually going to use this stage to hover and move across the target and we'll be ditching this pretty much just before we actually want to land and then we're only going to use a small amount of fuel in this um, stage to actually do the final part of landing because essentially we need both of these stages to be able to get up into orbit and then back to uh, back to Kerbin. So yeah, that is the payload done and now we need to do the actual um, launch vehicle. So I'm just going to raise it up a little bit so we have plenty of room underneath for the launch vehicle and then the first thing we need to do obviously is grab a decoupler and pop that on there. Then the next thing I'm going to do is, because I want to be able to rendezvous and dock with this next stage, is I'm actually going to go to structures again and grab the medium uh, adjustable tube and pop that on there. And then we're going to reduce the height of this to about half a metre. And the reason I'm doing this is we are going to add a um, docking port on here and an adapter as well. And if we just were to add the docking port straight onto the... Um, next decoupler or to that decoupler then it would end up clipping into the engine and it can make it a bit awkward when you're trying to decouple so if we have this we've got a little bit of space between them and we shouldn't have any issues when decoupling the uh, the lander um, but anyway the next thing we'll do is we're going to add another decoupler but this time we're going to pop this one upside down and then we're going to uh, grab a clampertron docking port put that there uh, go to structure and grab the RM adapter plate and pop it on the bottom and then we are going to go to utility and grab another medium reaction wheel and pop that there. So what we will also need is we're also going to need to be able to control this stage so we're going to need a um, command module so we're going to come in here we're going to grab the smallest command module there are the smallest remote guidance unit, unit even uh, the Octo 2 and we'll pop that on the bottom there and then we'll go back to structure and we're going to grab the medium or well, the small to medium quad adapter the tvr400l and pop that on there and obviously i'm going to close up all these gaps during the uh, tweaking time lapse um, but to make sure that we actually will have control of this we're going to need to add some solar panels and a antenna as well so we'll start off with the solar panels and we're just going to use the OX10C solar panels for this because we don't need to be able to retract them um, because we're not going to be going into the atmosphere or anything. So we'll pop two of these on there. We'll go to communication and we're going to grab the Communitron DTS M1 and pop one of these on here. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to go back into action groups and because when we have non-retractable... Um, 
solar panels for some reason they aren't included in the solar panel action group so we'll go into solar panels we will go to electrical then as i say we're going to pop the ox 10 c's into the solar panel group and we're also going to add the um communication antenna in as well because then we won't have to uh, manually extend that so we'll pop pop that in there so it's toggleable now you can see all of our solar panels and the commutatron are in the solar panel group so it just makes things a little bit easier when it comes to extending the solar panels and the commutatron so yeah now that is ready we need to actually build this next stage so we will start off by going to utility and we're going to add four um reaction wheels onto this actually we that's not no we didn't we don't need to add them just yet what we need to do is add an adapter so we're going to go to fuel tank first and grab the rs adsl 800 small slanted adapter and we're going to pop four of these on here and you can see they are at a slightly weird angle but we are going to fix that once we've actually um built the rest of this stage so as i said now we want to go back to utility and grab the reaction wheel we're going to add the reaction wheels here just because it can be a little bit um well it's a bit of a chonker is this thing uh so it can be quite sluggish so we'll add plenty of reaction wheels to make sure that we can move around in orbit without having to use any engines or rcs and then for the tanks we'll go to fuel tanks obviously and grab the x264 methalox tanks and pop four of these on here and because we have a couple of docking ports as well as soon as we get into orbit around kerbin we will actually get the fuel in space mission having these on this stage so that's another reason why it's good to have the nice long tanks um, but anyway for the engines for this stage we'll use the skipper engine again and then for the main launch vehicle we'll go to coupling and grab some more decouplers put four of them on there and for the tanks we're going to use the uh, x264 again with an x232 and then another 64 underneath that and for the engines we're going to use the mainsail engine and as i say they are a bit of a weird angle at, at the minute so what we'll do now is we'll go to the rotate and translate tool and we're just going to uh, move this around so that it's around about a 45 degree difference. So I believe that is three clicks to the left on that one. And yeah, that looks about right to me. So yeah, the only other thing we need now is to add some uh, solid rocket boosters. Because if we check our engineer's report, we can see that we're actually only at 0 0.8 um, thrust to weight at the moment. And obviously we do need to arrange the staging stack, but the four main engines are in the first stage. So yeah, that's pretty much the thrust to weight we're at at the minute. And we need to be at least, well, I, I usually aim for at least 1.1. Uh, a little bit below 1.1 is possible, but 1.1 means that you will definitely get up off the surface. So obviously for that we need to add some uh, extra boosters. So we're going to use the th uh, kickback solid fuel boost for this. But of course, first of all, we need to add some radial decouplers. So we'll grab the TTA 38K. We're going to add four of these onto this side. And we're also going to add another four on here as well. So we're actually going to have eight SRBs on this rocket. And then naturally we just need to grab the engines themselves so as i say we're using the kickback for this so we'll pop them so they are nice and central on the decouplers we'll do the same here and of course the only other thing we need to do with these is add some uh, nose cones So yeah, that is pretty much the entire rocket built. Um, obviously, we still need to add some struts. We also need to add launch clamps and the separation motors, and we need to close some gaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that in the tweaking time lapse now. I'll also obviously also sort out the uh, staging stack, and once that's all done, uh, I'll take you through what I did. So yeah, see you in a moment. So just a little tip while I'm doing this, a little way to make adjustments easier is if you use your middle mouse button you can actually uh, focus on individual parts and it just makes doing adjustments like this a lot easier. Thank you. 
Okay, so now all that's done, there is just one more thing that we need to add to this rocket um, because it doesn't actually have enough electricity in its current configuration, so we do need to add a few batteries. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go to electrical and we're just going to grab the Z400 and we're going to pop four of these on the side here. And that just means that we're not going to end up running out of um, electricity while we are doing any manoeuvres. Um, and now, this is a personal thing, but I think they stick out a little bit too far, so I'm actually going to just move them in a tiny bit as well. There we go. So yeah, um, as you saw during the tweaking time lapse, I closed up a couple of gaps here and there so that everything's nice and flush. Um, I've added some struts, some uh, separation motors and the launch clamps as well. And with regards to the separation motors, um, what I would ordinarily do is I'd add two or should I say four at the top of the booster and two at the bottom. And what that does is it just kicks the top of the booster away a little bit harder than the bottom of the booster so you get a nice fall away profile. Uh, and what I've also done is I have positioned the outer motors at one click away from 90 degrees and the inner motor motors at two clicks away. And what that'll do is it'll just give it a nice easy um, fall away and it'll not only push the boosters away from the core stage, it'll also push them away from themselves as well. So they won't end up hitting each other as they descend. Uh, it's not a major issue, but it's just something I like to do because it looks a little bit better, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, so that is everything with regards to the actual build. Uh, so I'll just run you through the staging stack. So as usual, we've got the solid boosters in stage one. And they are separate from the uh, launch clamps because we want to add a little bit of tension into the launch clamps before we actually take off. And that way it means we're less likely to drop down when we launch and uh, it'll probably go straight up. Uh, and if it does drop down, it'll only drop down a tiny little bit and we're not going to end up hitting any of the engines and breaking them on the pad. So yeah, as I say, in stage one we've got the eight solid boosters. In stage two we've got the four core engines and the eight um, decoupl uh, launch clamps. In stage three, we have the decouplers for the SRBs and the uh, separation motors for them. Then in stage four, we have the launch escape system and its decoupler, uh, because we're going to want to get rid of that before we actually move to the next stage, which is this one. Uh, so yeah, in stage five on the staging stack, we obviously have the next four engines and its decouplers. Then for the next bit, because we have two decouplers here, what I've actually done is I've set it up so that we will first of all decouple the lander and then once that's far enough away from this rocket we'll then decouple the uh, actual um, fairing as well or the, the shroud because because everything is so kind of clipped together it can get a little bit janky when you're trying to decouple and we don't want it going mad and breaking the engine or throwing everything off and messing up our orbit so that way it just means that we can get rid of these shrouds separately and of, co of course we do have a docking port here which we want to expose so we can actually dock with this stage and refuel after landing but yeah then it's just literally um the engines and their respective decouplers and then of course the um decoupler for the command module and it's parachutes and i've actually put the parachutes what we're going to use to get down to junior in stage eight now 
we could use that stage but most likely i'm probably just going to use the uh, staging um sorry the um what was it action group that we created action group two to deploy them but yeah that's pretty much everything there is for this build uh now as you saw during the um tweak time lapse the staging stack did actually stop working i couldn't move anything around and that seems to be a little bit of a bug that's happening at the moment and if you do encounter that then just it's just simply go to the uh, Kerbal Space Center and then back into the VAB and that'll fix that problem and you can uh, keep adjusting your staging stack. Um, yeah, anyway, as I say, this is our Juno lander for the Juno monument. Uh, the general idea with this is that we are going to be using that stage, as I mentioned, to actually descend to the surface and then we only want to use this stage for the final part of the landing and... Um, actually getting us off the ground again uh, it can be a very difficult mission to do because there is only a very small area in which around the monument in which you can actually land to achieve the mission uh, but there is even an even smaller area which is actually suitable for landing because it's very bumpy around the monument it's um, quite a challenge so it's going to be an interesting mission to do i may end up having to do multiple attempts at the landing uh, but we'll get into that in the next video in the main series anyway but um, anyway as i say that is all there is for this build uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, I would really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe and maybe even leave a comment as well and let me know what you thought. Um, and yeah, hopefully I will see you in the next one.